Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Jacob Young Show. An iconic TV housewife becomes even more desperate, and the oldest people on earth are over 115 years old. How can you live forever? This and more on tonight's Jacob Young Show. Welcome to the show. It's Wednesday. It's March 13th, 2019, and we are live. You can write in your comments and any of your thoughts, of course, on any of the topics to our questions that we have. So please, please join the conversation. Hey, Stacy, thanks for joining. Hi, Mark Rosano. I'm on a Southwest flight to take off to New York City. We'll be watching the show tonight on YouTube. Thanks, Mark. Um, first of all, big news today, of course, the biggest news of all is Instagram and Facebook and WhatsApp have all gone down. I mean, mine went down. Um, at first I was, of course, in a complete panic, like I think probably most everyone was. Um, I signed off thinking that there was, you know, some sort of glitch. <laughs> of course, I couldn't sign back in. Now, I do have it up on my computer, but it's not quite the same because you can't really make a post. Uh, there's not as many things that you can do with that. So, yeah, I mean, Instagram going down. Obviously, they must be doing some sort of maintenance work. I only hope that all my contacts and the people that I've gotten to know over the years through my social media still stays afloat. Um, let me know what you're thinking about that because I know my heart was pounding when that happened. I thought maybe I had done something crazy and I was trying to get them to resend my password to me. I thought maybe I had forgotten my password. Just kept giving me the same glitch over and over again. So let's hope Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp are back up soon. Now, another big news story is the college cheating scandal that has implicated more than 50 wealthy parents, including two celebrities, Desperate Housewives star Felicity Huffman and Full House and Hallmark Channel star Lori Loughlin. To briefly recap, they are being accused of bribing college officials, falsifying entrance exams, scores, and sports records to get their children into top colleges. And this is not only illegal, obviously, but it gives the wealthy an unfair advantage to bribe their children's way into Ivy League schools. Let me know what you're feeling about this. It gets me pretty hot. I think any parent out there would do almost anything to give their children any advantage. But, but cheating this way sets a very, very, very bad example. Parents are supposed to be role models for their children. It also is an unfair advantage to the bright and intelligent children out there who don't have the advantage of wealth to bribe their way into school. With those places filled, someone who could have really grown up to change the world may never, ever have that chance. There's no sympathy on social media for them, and Felicity and Lori Laughlin may actually be facing jail time. The judge was quoted, quoted to say that there are not two sets of rules for privileged children getting into college, and there also aren't two sets of rules in the justice system for the rich. What do you guys think about all this? How far would you go for your kids? Chime in with your thoughts as we move on to this next story, I want to just say hi to a few people if they're here. Oh, yeah. Well, Stacy, it hurts the children in the long run. It certainly does. Lori's daughter even said she wanted to go to parties, not go to classes. I read that. And now she is trying to, uh, you know, correct all the things on her social media. Perhaps that's why Instagram went down today. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're bribing Instagram now so they have some time to cover their tracks. Um, I use Twitter a lot, Cheryl says. Stacy, I couldn't play my games, laugh out loud. Yeah, I know, it was such a bummer. Um, <laughs> well, uh, money sure certainly can buy you everything. It, it, it is sad. It's sad in this day's a, day and age. And it's really sad that the teachers and the coaches, you know, I know, you know, teachers aren't necessarily paid what they probably are deserved. In fact, I know that, you know, but on the academic, on the college Ivy League level, I'm sure they're getting a pretty good salary. Um, benefits, all those things, but to take payola, payola to get a kid that doesn't deserve there to, to be in there, cheat on their scores, cheat on their, you know, their applications, and then pay money. I, I just really feel, I feel more sad for for the parents that did that. Um, I, I wouldn't do that for my kid. If he get in there himself, or she couldn't get in there herself. We have to face that reality. That's just what it is. Then we look at what are the next options. Anyway, moving on. So go ahead, go ahead and chime in if you still feel like uh, talking about any of that. It's not going to be a particularly long show tonight because I don't have a guest, and I'll explain that down here a little bit later. Um, but for anyone who wants to live forever, I mean, I think we've all had that consideration in our lives, thinking that that might be 
something that would be interesting. I know my wife has expressed to me that she would like to live forever. She'd like to see what's happening in the future. I'm too scared because I just can see that it doesn't seem to be getting any better, at least not anytime soon. And I'd be afraid to come back to an earth where nobody was alive. But, uh, or, you know, if I, and this is going to kind of move me on to my next thing. There is, this is where you get, uh, you know, so people have been talking a lot about uh, cryogenically freezing themselves. It's been a big topic again. It's come up over the years. It's where you get frozen after you die, and then you get thawed out when they find the cure for what caused your death. There's a company in Michigan that will freeze your entire body for an average price of $150,000, or you could just have your head frozen for $50,000. Now, people are even having their pets frozen. What do you think about coming back in 100 years or so without any of your loved ones you were living with at that time. And it's rumored, of course, Walt Disney was frozen. But aside from that title being a Disney movie, not actually ever been verified if Walt was actually frozen. The most famous person so far is baseball legend Ted Williams. A woman in Orlando, Florida recently decided to be frozen because her father was frozen. And she made the decision because her brothers and sisters were all being buried. And she didn't want her father to be alone if he came back. It's kind of sweet. What do you think? If money was no object, would you want to get into the freezer and see what's, what happens in the future? <laughs> Let me see if anybody's uh, talking about this. So a little bit more about... Uh, right, uh, right, just lets you know what the world is coming to, Stacy says. To money is the ruler in this, uh, this day and time. So basically, they didn't pay the whole tuition, but some people, as Candace, some people's money in other sources for the school, like school materials, etc., yeah. Uh, Lori's daughter seemed very entitled. Well, yeah. I mean, you grow up in Beverly Hills. You grow up with that kind of wealth, that kind of fame. And, you know, it is white privilege. I'm sorry to say it's exactly what it is. And, and, and the parents have fallen trapped to that. And they're teaching their children to do the same thing. And I have no respect for that. I mean, I'm sure they're nice people in person. I mean, I met Lori. I actually auditioned for a, a big pilot. I was I was in the mix for a spelling pilot years and years ago, and she was super nice. But even super nice people do super shady things. Uh, Stacy says, I don't know about uh, that unless the whole family gets frozen, but just don't seem, it doesn't seem right. Mark says, I hate the cold. <laughs> well, moving on, I had to postpone this week's interview. Another Broadway star was set to join us this week live from Seattle, my dear friend, of course where he's trying out for a new Broadway musical based on ballerinas in all of the famous Degas paintings. And last night during a technical rehearsal, my dear friend Jim Borsum was hit in the head by an 800 pound piece of scenery. He's okay, but he's feeling a little woozy today. Special shout out to Jimmy, who will hopefully be joining us next week to talk about the show. His career on Broadway starring in shows like Chicago, The Producers, Young Frankenstein, Adam's Family. He'll also be telling us what it was like to work with legends like Mel Brooks. And, you know, obviously talking about this injury. And I hope his headache is better soon. So we're all wishing you better, you know, well wishes right now, Jimmy, and for a speedy recovery. Um, Jay Leno agrees with the college bribery scandal, Mark says. And... Um, so, listen, I, I made an announcement this last week. and I mean, I've been announcing and I announced it last time. It's Actors Technique New York. I have partnered with them. They are a fantastic school that works with ages from tots all the way to teenagers, 17 years, 18 years old, teaching them the skills. And I, and I, I don't just say skills about acting because acting is so much more than just about being on a TV show or about being on stage. Acting can bring a lot to your life. It can bring a lot to your life by healing through painful moments that have happened in your life by learning how to access those emotions and express them and deal with them almost like therapy. So I feel like acting is, a, 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 for me, and I know a lot of people, it's like therapy. They even have a course on it in, at NYU. Um, so I'm very thrilled to be opening this branch in Salt Lake City of Actors Technique New York. Now our doors open April 13th. We have an audited class that we're doing free for everybody to kind of get the lay of the land, see what we're doing. It's actors on camera technique and auditioning technique to begin with. Uh, the actual class will open on April 27th. And 
Very, very excited. Registrations are already happening. If you know somebody in the Salt Lake area, I know you guys are all over the world and we're, I'm talking about a specific area, but I'm very proud about this because there's nothing better than learning something for so many years and then being able to train somebody. I feel like a master of, uh, of this technique and, and now I've got print, uh, apprentices that are now under me and it's very, very rewarding and I've been wanting to do this for a very, very long time. Now, I, I've kind of touched a little bit about it in my social media post that I was in the foster care system for a few years of my life. It was a very, very hard time. I felt like my family was torn apart. I felt like um, I was isolated. I was scared. I felt like an outcast. Um, and I definitely didn't have the confidence, of course, that I have today to do anything, let alone say hello to somebody. So I reached out to the state of Utah for their foster care system, because this is something that's so near and dear to me that I told them, I said, I want to open a specific class just for foster students. And I, and the reason why I, I actually asked her about this, I said, should I integrate them into the regular system? How do the foster parents feel? How do the students feel about that? And what the overwhelming uh, you know, understanding to the an answer to that question was, is that they do, they, they want to feel normal, and by feeling normal, they want to definitely be with kids that they don't have different things happening to them in their lives. They don't want to feel like they're the only one. And parents of foster children have agreed. So that's why I'm specifically doing a foster class. Now, now the state doesn't have money for this sort of thing. I mean, this is something that is um, I have to have a staff for, have to have a light supplies for. Obviously, we're teaching technique. Um, they have things that they're going to be able to take away from this. We're flying in actors, writers, producers, directors, People that are going to come in once a month from L.A. so they can physically touch it, they can be a part of it, and feel like they're that much closer to Hollywood, and that they matter, most importantly. Now, I can't do this by myself, and so I have created a GoFundMe, and I'm also reaching out to other places to help. My goal is $10,000, and you know, it's, it's Actors Technique New York. It's on GoFundMe. You can find it on there. $5, $2, $10, $20. $10. Anything helps. It's they're gonna. It's gonna make a difference in these kids' lives, and I can't do it all myself. I'm gonna be responsible for a couple other classes, but I want to make sure that no kid feels left out, and they don't feel like they're the only one, and they don't feel disconnected from the real world, and that people really care. And and by making that donation, you're showing them that they care, and we're gonna give them just as much great training as a kid that can afford to be a part of that registration. So. Um, so anything that you can do, please, please share it. Please share it with your friends. Be like, Jacob Young is doing something great, you know, not only for kids, but for the art. I, I, I want to make a difference, and I know I can. Uh, I, just, I just need to be able to have the staff to help me do it uh, because we're going to be dealing with a large class from the state of Utah. I, I plan on having at least, at least 25 students in just this one class. So that's going to be hours worth of, of time that I have to hire people to help me teach them and be a part and break them into groups. So of course, again, that's a GoFundMe is it's Actors Technique New York. You can find me on there. Um, I might even post a, you know, later, I think I've already posted a, a link to that. It's on Twitter for sure. And it's definitely on my, my Instagram. So anything will help. I don't care if it's a dollar. It's, it, it, it will make a difference to that goal and, and these kids' lives. So thank you for, for letting me take that time to discuss that. Now, how's everybody doing again on their New Year's resolutions? You know, I'm, I'm, I felt like I've slipped like, like last month. I felt like I was, I was dieting. I was doing really, really well. And then of course, you know, I just start getting into the regular course of life. And I feel like I'm always falling back behind. Um, let me know how you're doing. Uh, oh, uh, Tavia, Tavia, sorry, says that, uh, the, the kids are lucky to be learning from you. Um, hi, Kristen. She says, I'm going to see anybody. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Stacy, please write a book. We would buy it and love it. Oh, thank you. You're very sweet. Uh, sneak in a few extra minutes of the Jacob Young show before the flight attendant comes back and catches me. You're going to get in trouble, Mark Rosano. Serious trouble. Tavia says, I think that they should be included with the other kids at some point. Just my humble opinion as an educator. And that's where I was coming from too. But that's why I decided to ask the state official. And this question has come up. But I think absolutely integrating them into the, 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 the regular system as well. We're going to be offering classes that are not just on-camera technique classes. Eventually, we're going to be doing musical theater. 
Uh, we're going to be doing strict, strictly technique, Meisner, with some of the older students. Of course, we're going to be you know, teaching the young, young ones uh, how to create characters and have fun and, and you know, make noises and use up that space. Um, it's just going to be, it's really an exciting time for me. And, and it's uh, a very rewarding time for me in my life. I, I feel, um, I feel like I just started <laughs> a few years ago acting. Obviously that's not the case because I feel young still, but you also have to know too in your life when you've been given a gift for so long and it's time to, to extend that gift. And I didn't realize what I was doing for so many years. I was actually doing it with all my friends in the business. They'd ask me for um, help and ask me what they thought about this, you know, give me some notes on this audition or this particular scene. What do you see about this character? And I've been doing that for years and not realizing truly what I was doing. I was educating, I was teaching. Uh, and and I, I, I now have the ammunition to give the tools to those kids. So again, please, if you find time, Actors Technique New York. It's on GoFundMe. Help me out. Help me help them. Uh, let's make a difference in their lives. And as we, you know, as the show, we continue to do the show. I'll also be sharing clips of the scenes that we're doing in class with the kids on my YouTube channel, um, sharing their stories. It's going to be a really uplifting, uh, wonderful thing to see. So please, please help out in any way you can. Um, New Year's resolutions. I, I saw Stacy said something about doing good on my weight loss. That's fantastic. Um, Candace, uh, educators are amazing, including those who enjoy the fun and creativity. So true. Elizabeth Farr, you have good ideas there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Kristen, we thought so too, Tavia, but after talking to the state, they advised us the kids. Yeah, well, thank you. I was just explaining that, darling. She's upstairs eating some dinner right now while I am starving down here talking. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine, but... I love, I love being with you guys. Um, so let me see. Uh, we make improvements to ourselves for, for this year. You know, I was telling you I've been doing pretty good. Um, any questions? Kenneth, what's up? Thanks for joining, man. Um, uh, just made it in. How are you doing? I was just explaining to everybody, Kenneth, about, as I've been making some posts about it, I'm very excited about Actors Technique New York. And, you know, I have two separate classes, one with, you know, with registered youngins that can, you know, their families can afford to put them through these classes. And I'm working, of course, with the state of Utah's foster care system. I was a foster care kid for several years in my life. It's something that's really important to be uh, brought into um, feeling normalized in the system. So, so, so we're talking about that. And, of course, I, if you haven't seen it on my Twitter or on my Instagram uh, I can't do this by myself. I'm looking for help. Uh, there, there is a GoFundMe that's set up. What I have, the, what the the m money that I have set up is ten thousand dollars. I can do up to thirty students with that ten thousand dollars. You know, for a, a full semester. So, I would really any anything helps. A buck, five bucks, ten bucks. You know, if you can find it in your heart uh, to make a difference in these kids' lives, and I'll be sharing those updates with everybody. Um, and then. Um, Tavi, I hear you, Kristen. Uh, okay, you guys are having your conversation right now. <laughs> I love the conversations inside the conversations. That always makes me laugh. Um, Candace says, I work with infants so, uh, in music. Uh, music is a huge part of my lesson plans. And I also act out some nursery rhymes. And oh my gosh, art time is fun. I'm the fun, silly, and creati creativity teacher. That's wonderful. And that's, um, you know, that's, you know, when you're passionate about something, it comes through you. The kids see it. You know, and, and it, you see them light up and it makes a huge difference in their lives. My kids are going to be also, of course, joining the class. And my, my son, Luke, he's been wanting to act for a while. But I also want to be able to educate the parents and the children about the pitfalls of the industry. I think that's really important. And I think we lose sight of that so much when parents go, I, I, want, I want my kid involved in this. And maybe even the kid says they want to be involved in it. Sometimes I feel like the parent is living through the child and it has to really be their decision. A lot of times, uh, you know, they get kind of pushed into it. And then there's a lot of bad in the industry. Of course, we've been seeing that, of course, with the Me Too movement. We've been seeing that with, um, you know, all the scandals that have happened over the years. I feel like that it's starting to clean itself out, but it's always ever present in a business that is power hungry and money flush. So you have to make sure that you, you're arming children with all of the tools, not just the artistic tools, but the tools to beware of those pitfalls and they can make sure that they stay stay safe um 
Wow, Mark Rosano still have signal at 10,000 feet. You're supposed to shut it off at 10,000. <laughs> um, but anyway, so so I don't have much of a show tonight, guys. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm here. If you have any questions for me, you want to talk to me about any anything that's going on right now, please feel free to ask. Um, my interview got postponed because my good friend Jimmy, of course, was in an accident on his previews of his new show that is previewing Broadway show in Seattle, um, and. Unfortunately, of course, we're, our prayers are with him. He got hit with an 800-pound piece of uh, stage, whatever it was, and uh, no concussion, I think, but he woke up feeling not very good today. Uh, he's been in such plays as um, Adam's Family, The Producers, Musicals, you name it. The guy has been around forever. So he will be our interview next week, and he will be talking from Seattle about this new Broadway play that is getting tested in Seattle that is making its way back to the New York stages. So it'll be very it'll be a very very uh interesting interview because he's so he's been around for so many years in the industry. So he's got great stories and he's funny. So um but anyway, um I don't want to cut too too short, but if you have any other questions, I'll hang around for another couple minutes here or a minute or so and uh looking forward to seeing everybody next week, of course, and we'll have a brand new show. And, of course, if you have any questions after this show, you can always throw them on the YouTube channel here. I'm starting to get better, starting to get a lot better at, at, at realizing how to operate YouTube. It's a real learning curve, other than just looking up, like, how do I fix my tractor or <laughs> what's wrong with my car? Uh, Kenneth asked, uh, Jacob, do you have any favorite characters that you've played? I think by far, you know, uh, J.R. Chandler was my, my most favorite character of all time to play. But I'm really loving the characters that I've got coming out in these these movies. I mean, there's been a couple of movies, but uh, I just previewed on my my monitor here. I've got this monitor in my in my office because it was just a link. Uh, the film that's coming out with Ricky Garcia and myself, Angel, and boy, is it a very cool artistic piece. The underscoring was done by the guy who did Iron Man three. It is it's much different than anything I've ever done. It's much more cinematic. So I look forward to sharing that with everybody. They're, they're looking for the summer. I think the, if they're looking to come out in the summer. They're going to try to get Ricky and I up on Good Morning America and maybe on some of those talk shows. I'll let you guys know about that as it all progresses. Candace says, I have a question, Jacob. So what are your thoughts regarding the rumors about possibility of all my children returning to TV? You know, it's funny you, you ask that. This rumor has, seems to keep circulating around, and it's circulated around every few years. And I think probably the big circulation this time, of course, was this reunion coming onto the Michael Strahan and Sarah Haynes show that we did that reunion just a few weeks back in New York. Um, of course, that is the old time slot. That was the All My Children time slot. And, you know, a lot of the fans start to get worked up and say, hey, you know, why did you ever take that show off the air? When we had better ratings, we had better ratings even when they took us off the show than any of the shows that have been replaced, that, that has replaced that time slot. So I, I'd love for the show to come back. I Will it come back? That's just a really, that's a big, big question. And it's a big question mark on my mind. And I don't know. I, I know they bought the rights back. They did it intentionally. Now, whether they did it just because they wanted to own it and just have it in case i'd love to see it maybe go on a streaming format wouldn't that be something you know we have all my children exclusively on amazon uh i mean we know the success of shows like the bay um other soap operas that are now uh online they're being they're being watched internationally because of those platforms like amazon now the money you know wouldn't be the same of course it would be uh you know there wouldn't be the kind of revenue to build the kind of sets Probably be more location shoots, I'd imagine. But I'm with you. I, I think I think that I think the rumor is great. I hope it I hope it happens. I would be jumping on that bandwagon because that was the favorite of all three shows. For well, I kind of bounced around from a few. Um, even did an appearance on One Life to Live at one point. But uh, I would definitely jump at all my children. It was it was a real family there. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we ever come to Denmark again? Well, I hope so. Uh, I really, I really do. I, I, I love Denmark, and I, I love that region of the world. Um, so beautiful, so historical. Hey, Mindy. <laughs> um, and I hope so. I mean, I don't see why we, my travels won't take me back there. 
It may not be in the near, near future, but hopefully soon. So uh, my sister wanted me to tell you she loves you, even though L doesn't legally blonde joke. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, you tell your sister I love her too, and thank you so much. That is such a great scene. You know, who knew that that scene was going to become so iconic? I mean, it's been uh, you can look you can look it up, and it, it, that comes up, you know, for uh, little little video files and whatnot on Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. But it was always. Uh, it's always made me laugh. I was originally, I had auditioned for the lead in that, but they were looking for more, and their exact terms were, or the, the character description was uh, JFK Jr. type. And, and of course, I am not a JFK Jr. type, um, but the casting director I had auditioned for for so many times, she finally, she went ahead and uh, gave me, just pitched that, that to me. And I said, yeah, what the heck? You know, they just used that clip from General Hospital. Actually made some pretty good money at it. But it became forever, you know, burned as a, a cult classic, Legally Blonde. So I'm very thankful for that. We hope we can meet you too and uh, in your family again, and my family, and meet you again, of course. Um, but anyway, guys, I'm, if there's no more questions, I'm going to be jumping off. I'm going to grab myself some dinner. I want to say thank you again for joining me. And, of course, you can watch this show uh, and restream it and share it with your friends. And if you like hearing your voice, your name called and your um, <laughs> if you like hearing your name called make sure you tell your friends about it uh so thank you for joining me tonight if you miss a little you miss a lot good night everybody